Hello everyone, my name is Hemingway Jones. Today, we're going to answer the question as to whether or not a pen can both be iconic and underrated. Somehow, the Pilot E95S is both. It's an extremely interesting pen. So much about it is compelling and unique. So, let's get into it. Pilot is well known for making some of the best pens in the industry, and this includes fountain pens. From the Pilot Metropolitan, to the Custom 823, to the Vanishing Point, each of these is unique, and some rise to the level of being iconic. The Pilot E95S is one such pen. This pen has several compelling features. For one, it is one of the best pocket pens out there. It is quite small when capped, and slips into a very small pocket for easy carry and easy accessibility, no matter where you are. The pen is about 120 millimeters when closed, or approximately 4.69 inches. It is impossibly light at only 17 grams. It disappears into your pocket and you can hardly feel that it is there because it is so very light. This makes it that much easier to carry with you wherever you go. The other compelling thing about this pen is its value proposition. 136 US dollars for a 14 karat gold nib, and not just any 14 karat gold nib, but an aquiline springy masterpiece of joyous precision. What tiny pool of ink lubricates this point, resulting in such an enjoyable writing experience? This version is a fine nib, and that's a rare thing in my collection. I think you know that I love the smoothness of a medium nib and larger nibs, so a fine is a rare nib indeed for me to choose. It is a little disappointing that this pen only comes in extra fine, fine, or medium. I may find myself purchasing the medium one day. I do enjoy the precision of this nib but it would be fun also to see how extraordinary a medium nib might be. This fine nib has a writing experience all its own. It is precise. It has a very fine line. It's almost wispy. It also has an inlaid nib where the nib is set into the grip. And I've always loved these. It's very similar to a Schaefer Legacy or a Waterman Kareen in that aesthetic. The beauty is that the nib is much more integrated into the overall design of the pen. However, the downside to this is that there are no easy options for nib swapping. If some damage should come to the nib, you're looking at a professional repair. Setting that aside, the nib is long and glistening gold. It is a joy watching it tracing mad circles along the page. This pen comes in both black and gold and burgundy with the ivory cap as you see here. I had to wait three months for this color combination to restock, but I'm very glad I did. The color is gorgeous and has a certain vintage inspired charm. And I certainly have enough black and gold pens. As for its styling, it reminds me of cosmetic products from the 1960s, like some sort of slim lipstick case. And this is what I love about it. It has a certain feminine energy with its own feel and personality. It has a lush, shiny gold accents and a very attractive thick gold band around the edge of the cap paralleled by a thinner band both interrupted by pilot japan printed in the same shimmering gold directly opposite there is a bit of a dip in the band of gold 
to allow for a stylized cursive E for Elite that looks rather like a 3 when the pen is held in the opposite direction. The pen's deep burgundy resin body reminds me a bit of holding a Parker 51 and almost seems like it came from the same time period. The metallic ivory cap tends to hold the light in its center, with shadow falling off of each side, giving it a tremendous metalized depth and beauty. It has a very effective, no-nonsense gold-plated clip that is also set on a luxurious gold band around the top of the cap. All of these styling cues add up to a pen that is full of mid-century charm and sophistication. From its friction closed cap to its gentle post, it is precisely machined. I would say that it's well balanced, and it is, but at 17 grams, it hardly matters. The resin body has a diameter of 11.3 millimeters, tapering slightly to a 9.3 millimeter grip. Why am I telling you this? It's because it's a very thin, elegant, and graceful pen, yet is still a joy to use and dare I say quite a bit of fun. It comes with Pilot's Con 40 converter and accepts their proprietary ink cartridges if you prefer those. On the negative side, sometimes when you post this pen, it does feel a little rickety in your hand and sometimes feels as if it wants to just come apart. Also, when you post the pen sometimes, the clip is a bit in the way and you simply have to twist it and get it into the right position. Also, the converter is a bit small and doesn't hold very much ink, but I try to spin that into a positive since I can then refill it with different inks that much quicker. This being a burgundy pen, I find myself filling it with Diamine Oxblood more often, but there are several other red-based inks that look amazing with it as well, including Ferris Wheel Press's Ruby Royal Flush, Yamabudo, and Diamine's Writer's Blood, just to name a few. So who am I when I use this pen? Well, I find myself taking it to the office with me quite often. It's quite a smart and sophisticated pen. It's quite easy to write quickly with it. You simply pull out the pen, post it, and you're ready to go. It's also fantastic for taking notes, and it is a joy to use, which gives you a certain delight while you write with it. I find that my signature looks quite unique in a fine point when I'm so used to signing my name with broads and stubs. So this pen is certainly an icon and a joy to write with. But why do I think it's so underrated? Perhaps it's because it's so rarely at the top of anyone's favorite pen list and that it's rarely mentioned for being such a fantastic value proposition. It's such a great price point to get into a 14 karat gold nib, and not just any, but an extraordinary one. One that has unique features and expresses many of the possibilities that a gold nib affords you. Surely, it's a pen worthy of anyone's collection. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. From the ashes a fire shall be woken. A light from the shadows shall spring. Renewed shall be blade that was broken. The crownless again shall be king.
So what do you think? Did I make my case for the Pilot E95S? Is it a pen that you love as much as I do? Do you want to add it to your collection? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you could do me a huge favor, if you've been watching the channel and you haven't subscribed, please do so. It really helps a small channel like mine to reach more people. Also, if you could share this with someone else who you think would like this kind of content, I'd appreciate that as well. So I release new videos each Thursday at noon, so I will see you very soon further up the road. Take care.